friends, today I would like to talk about the biblical Kush. The knowledge of him is vital to understanding ancient Near East and Indian history. Noah is Manu of the Indians. He had three sons. One of them was Ham, the Kamdev, and the second was Shem, the King Bharat of India. Out of these two, Ham the Kamdev had a son named Kush, the Kashyapa. After the flood of Noah, Kush was ruling Egypt and Ham was with him. From there, both of them got kicked out by Dionysus because of Ham's wrongdoings. Then they both traveled up the river Nile until they reached the plain of Atbara from where they could see the Ethiopian tableland. There they ascended and built the city of Axum. According to the book of Axum, even the great obelisk in Axum was erected by Kush, who is Kashyapa. He also established another city named Mero in the lowland. Leaving these cities with his son, Ethiopius, Kush came to the Near East and established a city named Kish. We have the archaeological records to back this claim. The Sumerian king's list reads that after the flood, when the kingship descended for the second time from heaven, Kish became the seat of kingship. Meanwhile, one of Kashyapa's sons, Nimrod, had already established many cities north of Kish. In Hinduism, Nimrod is known as Lord Shiva and he was the most popular person of his times. Now we need to keep in mind certain things. Right after the time of Noah's flood, Lucifer the devil who operates from the oceans had targeted potential leaders of the earth by sending pretty water nymphs called Apsaras and sages from his abbeys to influence them in order to establish his kingdoms upon the earth. Just as King Shantanu of Mahabharata was approached by the water nymph Ganga Devi and Shiva was approached by Kali, Kush was also approached by a water nymph named Muni. Now, these creatures are fallen entities and they operate against our creator god Yahweh. However, Having been in heaven before their fall, they possess tremendous knowledge and they have done huge projects in the world. For example, Kali in the form of Queen Semiramis of Assyria had diverted river Euphrates to irrigate the lands for cultivation and Muni helped Kush undertake many projects in the Near East and in India. Caspian Sea has been named after Kush. Indians called it Kashyapa Samudra. I believe that Caspian Sea was an amalgamation of a few water bodies done by Kush. These water nymphs, being spiritual in nature, could see the topology and the underwater conditions and tell him what to do in problem solving. Even the valley of Kashmir has been named after Kush because he is said to have drained the Kashmir valley and made it habitable for people. Look at today's flooding in Pakistan. Its topology is such that water doesn't drain back easily to the ocean. They say it will take five months for the floods to recede, which is uncommon. All these and even the formation of Himalayas had taken place during Noah's flood. By the way, you can come across the name of Kush the Kashyapa in many forms such as Kush, Kish, Kach, Kash and so on. Now, the Hindu gods Shiva, Vishnu, Rama, Krishna are all descendants of Kush. That's why Rama had a son named Kush. Krishna called himself Kishan. However, the reality is these are all African invaders who subjugated the Indians. 
One way of recognizing them in depictions is that they are normally shown in purple color. However, today Hinduism tries to deny its African connection. It does it in two ways. One is by turning Kashyapa into a sage from Lucifer's abyss by calling him Kashyapa Muni. The second method is by creating an imaginary ancestor called Marichi to him and making Marichi a mind-born son of Brahma who is a fair-skinned being which is Nova. Well, on the whole, it is fair to say that Hinduism wouldn't be the same if it is not for Kashyapa, the biblical Kush and his sons. Thanks for watching.